Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode, we're going to deal with something that even three years later remains, I think, quite misunderstood. There are still a lot of emotions around this particular topic, and so it's quite difficult to wade into them without stirring them back up again. What I want you to do if you, someone who's obsessed with the Chris Watts case, someone who's spent a lot of time in it, try and put a lid on your emotions, try and think, try and use your common sense and logic when we talk about this. Uh, you don't have to do that again. You can go back to being emotional about everything. But in this particular episode, just try and do something new and think about this particular topic, not out of your field of experience, either as someone with allergies or as the mother of a child of, with, who's got allergies or a nurse, but just thinking about it objectively. Um, put yourself in Chris Watts' shoes, put yourself in his mother's shoes, put yourself in uh, Shanann's shoes, put yourself in someone else's shoes, right? So in this episode, we're going to go briefly through the phone data review. Then I'm going to answer the allegation, you know, what did Shanann make a mistake with Nutgate by referring to Shanann's own letter to Chris Watts that came about about five and a half weeks later on August the 10th, 2018. Then we're going to uh, go into um, whether this was a trigger for psychological preparation. And then I'm going to give you my own view on Nutgate. I've expressed it before, but I'm going to express it in a nutshell, right? By the way, if some of you are spilling over from the Summer Wells case, you'll understand in a moment what all the fuss is about and what all of this is about. You know, what was Nutgate? What did that involve? Well, Nutgate was something that happened um, six weeks before the Watts family murders. So it happened today, three years ago. And then, so, and then obviously there was the annihilation six weeks later. And the question is, did Nutgate play into that? And I believe it did. I believe it played into it very strongly. So if we go into the phone data review, it refers to texts sent between Shanann and her husband. At this point, Shanann was in North Carolina where her family were and Watts' family were. And Chris Watts was back in Colorado, uh, actively involved in an affair with Nicole Kessinger. At 18 minutes past five in the morning, Shanann called Watts and they had a 10 minute conversation. You really need to see this in context. So you need to know what happened on July 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th, Fourth, and him going to watch a movie and Shanann not being able to get hold of him. We need, really need to know all that. But uh, if you want to know all that, I'll put a link in the description. You can go through the phone data review on your own time. Then um, there's nothing else from July 9th in the phone data review until 11 minutes past four. So between basically half past five in the morning and 10 past four in the afternoon, there's nothing, right? And then Shanann calls Watts and they have a 14 minute conversation. And you can imagine what that conversation was about. Well, it was about Nutgate. Then about an hour and 10 minutes later, Watts made an unanswered call to Shanann. So he calls her back, presumably to report back on what he said to his mother what conversation he's had with his parents. Then she called back immediately and they had a nearly nine minute conversation. It's not really a long period of time given what the subject matter was about. Then um, at 16 minutes past eight, so a couple of hours later, around about three hours later, Shanann discussed how Watts's mother gave Celeste ice cream with nuts in the ingredients. Shanann felt this was done in defiance of her warnings about food allergies. Shanann told Watts, quote, you should call your dad and tell him you did not appreciate your mom putting your daughter at risk today, nor do you like that she teased our girls. You should also say you don't appreciate her saying that they have, um, that they have to learn that they can't always get what they want. 
referring to ice cream. They are two and four, exclamation mark. And so I think that's very important to stress is that the thing that um, Shanann's really upset about is that her mother-in-law said to her, um, you know, that, that they can't always get what they want. That was the thing that really riled her up, right? And then Watts replied, I will call him and tell him what I think about this. It's not effing cool at all because it is the kids. I will set this right. And that's it. That's July 9th. It doesn't really sketch the, the complete picture. And if you were breezing through the phone data review, you might think, well, something happened on July 9th, but, you know, probably wasn't such a big deal. Well, it was. Now, the weird thing when I was um, preparing this episode and I was putting up this slide, the cover slide, it's not effing cool at all. You have a picture of Shanann smiling into her phone. And you can obviously see the Lavelle patch sort of sporting, you know, being sported on her sort of shoulder chest area. She's got a big smile on her face and just behind her is Cindy. And I don't know what happened in the next frame of this, but I don't know whether Cindy wanted to be photographed. I don't know whether Cindy looks very happy there. And I wonder whether she's not thinking it's not effing cool at all. Don't use me to promote your spiel, right? But think about it even more broadly than that. Um, Shanann is smiling here and is are things going very well, right? She's in North Carolina trying to drum up business. And meanwhile, her husband's actually having an affair back in Colorado. It's not effing cool at all. Is Chris Watts happy with what's going on? His wife's pregnant and nutgate has happened. It's not effing cool at all. Is his mistress happy with the situation that he's... Um, you know, he's actually married and his wife is going to be coming back and how is she going to feel about that on the the day before Shanann gets back? It's not effing cool at all. How's Chris Watts going to feel about the situation, about the gender reveal happen happening? It's not effing cool at all, right? And I think one question that kind of needs to be raised is did Shanann's parents know that what was going on wasn't effing cool at all? If not, why not? Shanann does say in the phone data review to her friends that even her parents don't know, they're assuming that she's upset because of the pregnancy. And of course, it was something else. Chris Watts feeling that they weren't compatible. And he didn't, it wasn't a passing feeling. He felt it really strongly. And this is upsetting her and it is also upsetting him. And he said, for example, that he doesn't want the baby. And unfortunately, because of Nutgate, Shanann assumed all of the funny feelings from Chris Watts was from how she treated his parents. So if you could have taken Nutgate away, Shanann would probably have been able to see very clearly that what was actually going on was an affair. Instead, she was second guessing herself, thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't have said this, maybe I shouldn't have said that, right? Now, before we get to Shanann's own letter, and I think this letter is really important to address some of the concerns expressed in this pretty emotional comment that I got, I think, on Patreon. Someone said, for me, the idea of using an allergic substance as a means of, quote, unquote, teaching a lesson to a two-year-old in that manner is negligent and cruel, and anyone doing so has an underlying serious issue. You teach the child about nuts, about checking ingredients and so on, but one, to place a bowl in front of them expecting they may not be tempted to sneak just one is ridiculous. And two, providing a second child with a bowl of ice cream while depriving the other of perhaps a bowl of ice cream without nuts would have been very simple. Well, you can say that, but did that happen at the Lindstrom birthday party where the kids ate cake but the Watts children couldn't? Anyway... Personally, if I have a child or grandchild, this is the same person commenting, with an allergy that can result in potentially fatal consequences, that food or item is not going to be in my home if there is the possibility of exposure. Okay, great. Um, but if you um, have your children go to someone else's home, can you demand that they remove all those ingredients? Maybe you say, yes, I can. 
does that mean you sort of write something down on a post-it and then you expect your instructions to be carried out, right? And you might say, yes, okay, well, how about this? I've got a dog and I expect it to be reared in a certain way. Should you do exactly what I want based on what I want for my dog? Yes, you should, but, but does it work out that way? The answer is people tend to take the best care of their own themselves. You can't really expect other people to do what you want, you know, ba exactly the way you want. In any way, coming back to this comment, she says, um, most schools don't have peanut butter anymore because of the incidence of nut allergies in children. This is long-winded, but I must stand up for Shanann Watts in this particular scenario. From what has been reported from Cindy's camp, she was very cavalier about the turmoil that predictably resulted, dismissive of any real potential for danger, and seemed slightly pleased with herself that her daughter-in-law had blown a gasket. Yes, the factors you mentioned may have exaggerated Shanann Watts' reaction, but that is understandable and could be accepted under the circumstances. She goes on to say, please do not try to teach a two-year-old they can't have everything they want by using an allergen as a prop in the lesson. Who would do that or lay claim to doing so if they didn't? I'd be extremely hesitant to trust someone who didn't accept they'd had a lapse in judgment, apologize and, ins and ensure me that they'd be more cognizant of what foods they were giving my child. But the damage was done and after seeing Cindy's scathing post-murder interview and public shaming of the victim, I don't blame Shanann Watts for her reaction or expectation that her husband should be in agreement with her. Um, what damage was done? I mean, nothing happened to Cece. Anyway, going back to this, she says, her dismay concerning her husband's lack of concern and refusal to confront his mom as a mother, as a father and husband. Well, from the phone data review, it wasn't that he lacked concern or refused to confront them. He, he did, although he did say in his um, prison interview, I think in Wisconsin, he said he should have been more aware of it. So I think he did confront them, but he probably needed to follow up kind of thing. Anyway, she goes on to say, Cindy seemed to know exactly what she was doing despite protestations to the contrary, very contrived and not, not real convincing. Nutgate wasn't a minor incident. It was foreboding. The same as the doll picture. I'm not going to go through all that. Bottom line, Nutgate is a pivotal event. Ending any relationship is very difficult. But if you're getting signals that cause your gut to flip-flop, find a way to find the courage to do whatever is needed to give yourself space and time to listen to your gut, even if it's tearing your heart and your perfectly crafted world apart. Things can be replaced, reputations repaired, lives taken are irreplaceable. And then she says, by the way, she knows a lot about the allergy issue because she's a nurse. And so um, what I want to sort of address here is she's kind of reiterating the exact same thing Shanann was, which is I've got every right to be totally um, intense about this, to be very emotional about this. And, and I'll read through her um, Facebook post in a, in a moment. Um, I, I can t I'm totally justified in flipping out over this because, you know, this little girl's life is at stake. And, you know, um, things can be replaced, reputations repaired, etc., etc. Not when you sort of block out a family member. Those can't always be replaced. Um, grudges against family members aren't things that can always be repaired, right? And one has the sense that Nutgate was a major wall that Shanann erected against... Chris Watts's parents, and Chris Watts actually used that. That formed part of his psychological preparation that triggered him to think, well, if his parents never see his children again, they will just blame Shanann. So if we go through Shanann's Facebook post, she says, I need to vent to people who understand. She's venting on Facebook, but I think it was a, a, group, that, a group that was... Um, dealing with allergies, um, you know, an allergic women's group or something like that. She says, my 2.5 is severely anaphylactic. Actually, CC, 
um, was about to turn three years old. Anyway, to most, uh, she says, to most then all tree nuts and we are visiting in-laws. I specifically said we can't have them in the house when we stay. My mother-in-law said that we don't buy them. I specifically mentioned the one she's deathly anaphylactic to as well. I arrived and on the floor shelf of her center island was a big bag of pistachios, big bad one. I removed immediately. Now, those same nuts were actually at the house in Aberdeen, I think in her brother's room. Of course, there's nothing mentioned about that. She says today she lets her other granddaughter eat an ice cream that is all tree nuts in front of and next to my 2.5 year old child that can't have them. I said I didn't appreciate it and removed my daughter. Her response was she has to learn she can't always get what she wants. I'm beyond furious and she's telling me I'm overreacting when my child's life is at risk. If you want to read the other posts that she, she made, she made quite a few. I'll put a link in the description. You can read those on your own time. Um, my, uh, my position on this is really to just jump to the, the end where Shanann writes Chris Watts a letter and she actually kind of apologizes. She basically says, I will be civil and get along with your mom. So at this point, she actually thinks she's about to lose her husband because of Nutgate. She's about to lose her marriage and the interest of the father of her unborn son, the, the interest and the commitment of the father and her marriage partner over Nutgate and that sort of part of it. And I think Chris Watts was happy to let her think that that was all that was happening. I think that was part of what was happening and part of that was factoring into his premeditation. But she said, you know, I've only seen you shut down like this once and that was with your parents after our wedding. That was another time where Shanann made demands. You know, I don't want them at my wedding kind of thing. She says, we deserve to have all family in our life and with love, not hate. And so she says, you know, I don't want to lose you. I will be civil and get along with your mom. We just all need to have mutual respect. I will do anything for you, the last thing on earth for you to hurt you. And so she doesn't really apologize for Nutgate, but she certainly backs down from it, saying, I will be nice to your mother, right? And so my response to this other person who left this was that, my my impression is that Shanann felt that she had overreacted, that she did need to extend a hand of friendship and make peace based on what had, what had transpired. I mean, at this point, um, everyone felt, Chris Watts even felt that it wasn't safe for uh, the children to even FaceTime with, with uh, his parents. When they wanted to do it, he said, I, th I don't think we should do that. I'm scared of upsetting Shanann, right? And that was on August 11th, their last weekend as a family. Now, there's a lot more to say about this. Um, I'm not going to say a lot more about it. But what I will say is Shanann would later send him a really long message. I think it was during the week when they were in North Carolina. And she said, Something like, you know, I'm not going to let family cause problems. You know, if there's a problem, I will just get rid of it, right? And I, I wonder whether that also didn't reinforce this um, accelerating momentum of Chris Watts' criminal psychology. Just those words, you know, I will just remove it. Those were, again, Shanann's words. So what I want to end off with is this statement, she can't always get what she wants, right? And Shanann was furious when she heard those words, you know, from her actual statements on Facebook, she said, you know, I had tears of anger, I was so angry. You know, her mother-in-law telling her or telling her daughter, you can't always get what she wants, just made her absolutely furious. And I get the sense that this person that is in Shanann's corner feels exactly the same way. How dare you um, use this allergen to prove the sick joke that she can't always get what she wants? How dare you, right? I see it in a totally different way. And maybe I'm too unemotional and maybe 
I'm too sort of um, seeing it too objectively. But the way that I see it is, think about those words, she can't always get what she wants in terms of Shanann. What if Shanann had realized, I can't always get what I want. I can't stay married to this guy. Um, I can't actually have this baby. I don't, can, can you imagine if she'd disagreed with Chris Watts in the beginning and just said, no, we can't actually afford a, a third baby. We can't always get what we want. We're not going to have a third baby. But can you imagine if Shanann had said, you know what, um, I can't actually get what I want. I, I want to be married to this guy, but it's not going to work. I can't always get what I want. I accept that. Let's begin um, divorce preparations. She would still be alive today. What if the kids had realized, you know, they can't always get what they want in terms of chicken nuggets or whatever it was, or, or even ice cream or whatever it was? What if the kids had not gone to the school that their mother had enrolled them in, Primrose? What if they just found some other way of, you know, going to school that wasn't so expensive? What if the children's, the, the, what was wanted for the children was sort of um, just lowered those expectations? You know, we can't always get what we want for the children. W what if having an affair had occurred to Chris Watts, you know, those, that sentiment as well. I can't always get what I want. You know, I'd like to have an affair with this woman. Well, you know what? You can't always get what you want. What if Nicole Kessinger had heard those words, you know, and listened to them? Yes, this guy in the office, he looks quite well groomed. He's got this perfect family. She's feeling envious. She's feeling attracted to him. Nicole, you can't always get what you want. Okay, I can't. What if staying married or, or straying from his marriage had been something Chris Watts had thought about? You know, you can't always get what you want. You can't always get, but in, in a non-panicky way, thinking, you know what, I can't stay married to Shannon. I can't always get what I want. Um, so I need to get divorced. Right? What about living beyond their means? You can't always get what you want. You can't have that vehicle and that house and this and that. You can't always get what you want. What about committing a crime and thinking you can get away with it? You can't always get what you want. You can't get the sort of outcome that you think you can get. What about wanting to get out of prison, which is where we are now? You know, you commit the crime, you do the time. Now you're sitting in prison well, I want to get a 35C. I want to get out of jail. Well, you can't always get what you want. And I think those words and that sentiment applies so much to the world we live in. I think it applies so much to the narcissists of this world. You can't always get what you want because a narcissist will always insist on getting exactly what they want. A narcissist demands to get what they want. So it applies to us as well. And, you know... Although I can understand Shanann resenting those words from her mother-in-law, they were actually a kind of a truism. And think about that truism in the context of multi-level marketing, which promises you you can get exactly what you want. Just say the right words, say the magic words, put a magic patch on yourself and you can get what you want. And that had been Shanann's gospel for the past months and years that you can get whatever you want. Just say the magic words. And was she getting what she wanted? Was she truly living the fairy tale? Or was it not effing cool at all? Once again, if you want to hear the extended versions to this, and I do advise that if you want to get the full impact of the phone data review, listen to it in order. Listen to it on each consecutive day, there's a lot to go through. But when you do it like that, when you pace it like that, you really get um, the true value of it. So um, please do that. I'm going to be posting links to the phone data review on Patreon in chronological order. So if you want to access it that way, you can obviously join Patreon. Thank you for listening. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time.
Thank <laughs> you.